Well, greetings from Texas. Hello. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, well, uh, my name is Brian Thomas. I'm working for the Institute for Creation Research. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we're here with, with um, Dr. Eberlin. And so can you introduce yourself? And oh, yes. Actually, the, actually, where are you from? And give us a flavor of what it's like where you're from or, or where okay. you live. Yeah, I live in, in Brazil in this big city of Sao Paulo. It's 20 million people uh, living in here. And I work for the Mackenzie University, uh, which is a uh, uh, Presbyterian university in Brazil. I uh, also uh, work with mass spectrometry. So I have a mass spec lab here at Mackenzie University. And also, I'm a director of research and innovation for the MacGraph Center, which is a center that is dedicated to research in graphene. And I'm also the president of the Brazilian uh, Society of Intelligent Design. So I run the society. We have more than 3,000 members. So. I'm also organizing conference, giving talks, podcasts, uh, writing books on intelligent design. I'm also a creationist. I'm a young earth creationist. I believe the dinosaurs were extinct just a few years ago. <laughs> Thousands, not billions or millions of years. And I'm also defending the Earth is young, the universe is young. So, but as a defender of intelligent design, we don't, we don't not, we do not discuss the age of the Earth uh, inside our movement, of course. But here in Brazil, everybody that is member of the intelligent design movement are free out of the intelligent design movement to have their own opinion and to express that opinion freely to everybody. So I'm, when I go to this podcast and uh, give interviews here in Brazil, I always defend my Christian view of, uh, of the age of the earth, the universe, how life was created. So I'm, uh, I'm defend the Bible and the, the cheating from the Bible. And that's why I enjoy it so much being at the ICR, um, Institute a few months ago when we have this uh, intelligent design um, a meeting in Texas, I was there. I got this T-shirt from <laughs> from it looks familiar from the store, yeah. And I have been uh, wearing this T-shirt in my podcasts and um, defending how life is young because we found tough, uh, soft tissues in dinosaurs. So how come? And it's really. Yeah. Uh, an evidence it's really really strong evidence that life is uh, has been in this planet for only a few thousand years well that's great I, we appreciate your your time with us today and and taking time out of all that all that busyness that it sounds like you're tied into and just mm -hmm. just just your introduction I, I think um we we get a sense of the passion that you have for what mm -hmm. you believe and uh I guess let's let me just ask um the next question would be like what led you to, so you, you're saying you want to defend the the bible's position on origins and mm -hmm. and, and and um you know a young earth creation and is was what some people call it or biblical creation is what I like to call my mm -hmm. position uh what led you to that conclusion can you outline your story uh, have you sure. always believed that or or what well, uh, when I was a little boy, I, I went to the Bible school at my church. And I, I remember that uh, a woman there, my professor at Bible school, used to tell me that the Bible is uh, where I can find uh, the correct answers from uh, what I, uh, I am. Uh, how old the the universe is how the uh, how life was created on this planet and i used to to believe fully in the bible and i used to believe that um, earth was young the universe was young 
But um, then I I joined the uh, university here in Brazil, the University of Campinas, and I was told by my professors, uh, teachers there, that no, that the Bible is not correct. Uh, we have proved that the universe is old, that evolution occurs, Darwin's is right. And then I became an a theistic evolutionist. Uh, and I was like that for four years. I was defending evolution. I was teaching evolution. I was defending in my talks and my lectures as a professor. I, I became a professor also at, at, at that university, University of Campinas. And I was for four years a believer in Darwin's uh, theory, uh, Big Bang theory that the explosion created the universe. I was teaching chemistry. So I was talking about chemical evolution, the Stanley Miller experiments that prove that evolution started in that primordial soup that we could make the building blocks of life. But um, Sunday, I, I went to the church and I was praising the God, but what uh, uh, kind of a strange God that guided evolution, the Big Bang and everything. And I was like that for 40 years in my life. But then in 2008, um, I discovered intelligent design. There is a, a professor here in Brazil, Enesio Almeida Filho. He used to have a blog. He still has this blog. And he was promoting intelligent design throughout that blog. And I, I was shocked to know that there was a scientific theory, the uh, theory of intelligent design that was proving that uh, life was made by intelligent design. The universe was made by intelligent design. And then I, I got in love with this theory of intelligent design. And, and then I, I realized how uh, wrong I was uh, in you know merging God with evolution, uh, putting this God to guide this process or uh, the Big Bang also, and then I became a um, promoter of intelligent design in Brazil. I I started to participate in debates. Um, also, I established the Brazilian Society of Intelligent Design, TDI Brazil. And the more I study about the evidence, the more I get convinced that evolution is completely wrong. So, uh, but but still, I, I, I believe that the universe was old and life was also old on this planet. But I kept on studying uh, getting the new evidences and then i i got convinced that i was fully wrong uh, life was created yes by intelligent design yes but not so long ago uh, life is really uh, young and only a few thousand years and as a chemist i started to investigate the universe uh, and the uh, and life in a chemical point of view. I was looking for the molecules. I was uh, revisiting the Stanley Miller experiments, and I, I I could see easily how wrong I was to believe that the experiment could have any any evidence for the origin of uh, life from chemical evolution. And I also started to investigate the Big Bang model, you know, how the uh, cloud of expanding gas could collapse to, to itself. No way. <laughs> so I was, the more I study chemistry, the more I study biochemistry, the more I get convinced that yes, the life was um, created uh, by an intelligent mind, and at once, it was not a process that uh, took many, many millions of years or billions of years. 
the universe ha has been established at once. The a life has been established at once. And a few, uh, how long ago? A few thousand years ago. And uh, that's uh, the history of my uh, life and my involvement uh, involvement in this debate. And nowadays, I'm I'm uh, promoting this in Brazil in many podcasts and uh, interviews. I wrote three books, and and of course, uh, the the scientific foundation is intelligent design. But uh, as a creationist, I'm. And I, as a member of the intelligent design group in Brazil, outside the group, we are fully free, as I said, to defend our um, expanded view with theology. And I'm I'm defending now uh, the same uh, view that I got from my teacher from this Sunday school. Mm -hmm. I always tell this. <laughs> She was right, <laughs> and the and the experts from this world, the, the, the professors, the science, uh, the scientists that tried to deviate me from the Bible, they were fully wrong. My teacher from Bible school, she was perfect, and she was, uh, you know, drinking from the Bible only the scriptures, uh, the, the the text from Genesis. Uh, this is really amazing, isn't it? Uh, the, the good science you get from the Bible. Uh, uh, spite of that, you can be fully uh, dismissed by in, uh, theories that come from from man in science. Right. Well, that's that's a great story, and I appreciate you sharing it. And it it, mm -hmm. remind, it reminds me of of my story in, in as much as. I can think of those times looking back on it all when, when I just imagine the Lord in heaven just kind of going patiently waiting. He'll come around, you know, yeah. he'll, he'll see because yeah. I, I've, I've been here all along, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it's like the scripture has been um, uh, has been right all along. And it's, it, the Lord is patient with us and, and, mm -hmm. and, and he's he allows us to go through our little journey and we always end up getting back to him and and back to his word, but mm -hmm. uh, can I, as a chemist, let me just talk a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. um, you you mentioned the the Stanley Miller the Miller Ure experiment, mm -hmm. and, and I was taught also that this I was taught this in ninth grade. You know, in, in um, this is uh, what we call high school here. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, when I was fourteen years old, I was taught that this this is proof of evolution, and I believed it because it's all I had all I was told. And then, and then I got to a secular, you know, mainstream university and it was reinforced, you know, again, mm -hmm. the Miller-Urey experiment showed that you could get amino acids and these are the building blocks of life. So you, you used to teach that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and did you say four years or 40 years? And, and, Four, and then, eight, eight, 40, four, zero. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You don't even look that old. Wow. That's amazing. Um, yeah. so so what is it that that you now understand about that experiment? Mm -hmm. If you could get into just some of the details sure. of, of the of the chemistry that that you thought was there but is not really shown it, yeah. anymore anymore in your in your new perspective. Sure, uh, your first name is Brian, right? That's right. Oh yeah, in Brazil we 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 like to call people from uh, by his first uh, their first name. Is that okay that I call you Brian? Absolutely, uh, yes. Okay, Marcos, my first name. Okay, oh, uh, you know when I started uh, my um, chemist courses, uh, I was told that Stanley Miller Urey experiments prove chemical evolution, and I bought it without studying it. I, I just ah. believe it that it was true. I think most people do it. They, they, just, they just bought it. They don't inspect the product. They just go in and buy it. It's free, actually. <laughs> you mm -hmm. don't have to pay anything, right? They, they give, you, get, uh, give to us by, uh, uh, freely. So I, I, I believe it. I, and then I started to teach it. Uh, just by saying, 
Okay, he made the amino acids, and this proves evolution, chemical evolution. And I was saying, okay, the amino acids could aggregate from some peptides that could form proteins, and there you go. That's really amazing that how we buy it without expecting the product. But as soon as I, I, I realized that I was wrong, that intelligent design told me that by intelligent design, uh, life was established in this planet, I decided to look at the experiments and for the details of it. And as soon as I started to in inspect the product, I could easily see how bad that product was, uh, is actually. You know, you have uh, Stanley Miller uh, primordial atmosphere. It's completely wrong just to start it. You know, he, he took the oxygen out of it. And we now know that from the... If you look at the rocks from that period of time, uh, there are, uh, oxygen is there. So the primordial atmosphere should have oxygen. But uh, there's no way out. If you put oxygen in that atmosphere, the products would be uh, oxidized. But if you remove the oxygen, then you would not have the uh, ozone layer. So <laughs> still the product would be destroyed because UV radiation from the sun would just burn everything. So there's no way out. But then you look, okay, some uh, amino acids were formed, sure. But uh, uh, <laughs> uh, you, you have to go on. Th those reactions should form peptides and proteins. And then you look at the reactions, the coupling reactions. And there's a professor here in Brazil that has been doing some calculations on the delta G. It's uh, a criteria that one of the criteria that you use in chemistry to see if the reaction is favored. And when you do the calculations, you see that the delta G of those reactions are positive. <laughs> So in, in, in order for a reaction to take place, Brian, the delta G we know in chemistry should be negative, not positive. So there is a chemical law that is telling us this reaction will never occur. The delta G is positive. But there is another aspect of the reaction that is still uh, even worse. Or the amino acids, they have the amino group, the acid group. Those two groups should react for the protein to grow. But it still will have the side groups. And there are 20 amino acids that should be formed in that soup. And the R groups, Brian, uh, they also have chemical uh, sites there. And these R groups, could also react with themselves. So uh, if you let the amino acids there by chance, by their own, or the, uh, the reactions also could take place with the R groups. And those would be interfering reactions that would kill the whole process. And we were doing the calculations for those RR reactions. And guess what? the delta G for some of those reactions uh, reactions are negative. So <laughs> uh, the reaction that we are hoping for is prohibited by the by a law of chemistry. And the, the reactions that we are hoping for never to occur, those are the reactions which are allowed by the chemistry. So in, in a chemis chemical point of view, that soup is a nightmare. <laughs> it, it, it's uh, the worst possible scenario for the emergence of life because there are there is a chemical law there saying a, a peptide will never show up from this soup. And there, there is a chemical law saying the interfering reactions that you should hope 
never would occur here. Those are the reactions that are going to take place. So there is no hope at all. There's lots of other problems. You can also, uh, Stanley uh, Miller Uri uh, also made free amines and free acids. If they react at e either one of the sides of an amino acids, the reaction will be stopped. So there are many, many, many problems. Uh, so how life uh, 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 was able to escape from these uh, uh, limitations or these uh, barriers? Well, we have ribosomes, and the okay, ribosomes. So, so if I can yeah. just interject, so now you're sure. So you're so you were just describing what's happening in a in a in a chemist's lab in a vial in a glass sure. bottle with some you know electric discharge and very controlled environment and still made um you, you know a gooey paste that was useless for life but that's not what i was told and now you're saying mm -hmm. now you're saying that even if it makes one amino acid or or a, or a, a few out of a billion um even those amino acids that it might form spontaneously they never link together into a chain spontaneously because the free energy is um, is not favorable, and and so that's kind of what I'm getting. But now, but now I think I I, I think you're talking about what's happening inside a cell, like living cells, sure. because sure. we have to get these these individual amino acids to link together to form peptides, uh, and and all of life, all of cellular life depends on that. And so now, yeah. So now continue with with like how. How what's required to get these reactions mm -hmm. to occur since they don't occur spontaneously, but they occur all the time inside cells. And and I and I and I think that's where you're headed. So please, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Uh, but before I go ahead, just let mention briefly that now in, in my lab here in Sao Paulo, Mackenzie's University, we are we are trying those reactions mm -hmm. uh, with amino acids and uh, seeing uh, if they would link with themselves. And we find that, yes, there are some papers that have been published. Only two amino acids do it, mm -hmm. and uh, which are the simplest ones. With the, uh, the, They have a neutral, two amino acids. We have 20 in life, but two amino acids, Brian, only those two, they have neutral side groups. And then if you play some tricks with chemistry, like putting a catalyzer, uh, like boric acids, there are paper that, that there, there's a paper that has been published in Nature. There's another one in Science. Uh, they, they were claiming to, to uh, have been able to make peptides out of, amin of, of um, amino acid soup. But if you look at the paper, they only use those two. And you know why? because they have neutral side chains groups. And that's exactly, I don't know if you have heard about this debate, big, uh, uh, James Tour and Professor Farina's debate. And they were debating on the chemical evolution and they were talking about this polymerization of amino acids in this primordial soup. And Professor Farina defending chemical evolution was saying, okay, there's this paper that has been published. There's another paper that has been published showing that indeed the amino acids can react with themselves. And if you look at those papers, there are only two, serine and alanine, uh, which have neutral side chains. We, we were also doing this in our lab. Okay, you can make some uh, peptides of, out, out of those two, but they are useless for life because it's just a mere repetition of uh, the same building block. It's serine, 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 alanine, 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 alanine. And for life, this is useless, completely useless. You have to link all the 20 amino acids. And of, of course, Professor James Tour was challenging Professor Farinas in that debate saying, okay, why don't you try those two? Uh, glutamic acid, and there's another one, uh, which has indeed reactive side chains. And we, we are doing these reactions here in our lab. And guess what? Okay, 
first, they never react with themselves. But even if we, if we play some tricks, okay, they can react, but the, the most favored reaction is not the right one. The link that we, you are hoping to get to grow a, a protein, the favored reaction is the reactions with the side groups which makes something, but it's not a protein. <laughs> so it, 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 it's, uh, if, you, if you believe in chemical evolution, anyone that is listening to us, uh, your faith is completely out of any hope in chemistry. Chemistry is fully against chemical evolution. Laws of chemistry, the laws of chemistry, they, they uh, I was in this uh, intelligent design conference in Texas a few months ago when I visit ICR. And there's a professor there, there that was used to say, chemistry is there to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> chemistry wants to kill you. Uh, uh, the laws of chemistry wants to kill us, to destroy our proteins. Uh, they, they work against polymerization of amino acids. So there's no hope in chemistry. The only hope we have for life is on an intelligent mind that knows chemistry and plays some really smart tricks in order to make those reactions which are against the laws of chemistry to really occur. And that's uh, exactly what uh, occurs in living system inside a cell. What we have in there. So we have a, a machine. That's yeah. a great. That's a great setup. And so, so I, yeah. I, I would say, play some tricks. That's a really understatement. I think. <laughs> I think you're about to tell us that those tricks are uh, extraordinarily well engineered and, and involve lots of specified molecular machinery. So go ahead. Yes. Lots of specified molecular machinery. Lots of, we start with the ribosomes. Ribosomes are incredible, inc it's very, very sophisticated machine. It works like two hands, mechanical uh, machine that work like this. And uh, one hand grabs the amino group and the other hand grabs the acid group and they, the two hands work together to uh, uh, make those two groups get closer and react. It's a, a mechanical induced reaction that is induced by a machine. Uh, there's nothing similar in, in, in chemistry. You can go to any lab in the world. You never find a machine like this that mechanically takes two reagents and make them react properly with the proper configuration, the proper orientation in space. It grabs the amino group, grabs the carboxylic, uh, carboxylic acid group and tell them, okay, you, you, now you should react like this. Forget about the R groups. They are down there. The reaction that takes place is in here. And there's another trick. Uh, the amino acid, the new amino acid that comes to the ribosome to get linked into the protein chain that is growing is not an amino acid. It comes as an amino ester. It's derivatized. There was a, there was a, a uh, ingenious chemist that was playing everything that was making those tricks. Uh, so uh, the transfer RNA brings the amino acid. No, it brings an amino ester. And you know why? Because he knew the calculation. He knew that the Delta G would be positive for amino acid. So he decided, okay, let's make an amino ester. Then the reaction will have a negative Delta G. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it, Brian? Uh, there was a chemist there that was calculating in a computer. Let's think uh, uh, a scenario like this. And he's, he did the calculations and said, oh, the Delta G is positive for amino acids. Let's, let's try amino ester. Oh, okay. It, it's negative now. 
So it's derivatized as an amino, amino ester. And so mechanically induced reaction takes place inside this extraordinary, this uh, uh, super, super mega uh, uh, sensational machine, <laughs> the ribosome. So the protein grows uh, correctly and perfectly. Uh, and uh, the, the the tricks are are many ones because then for the transfer amino acid to bring the correct amino acid, you have to connect an RNA with the amino acid. So you have lots of different enzymes that connect those two. Uh, for the energy, you have an ATP uh, machinery that makes the uh, that provides the energy for the reaction to take place. It's a um, cascade of machineries and many different chemical tricks that are played in this whole process for a, a protein to grow. You have to also to have the correct recipe. So the recipe comes from the, the, the nucleus from the cell, the DNA, uh, which is a uh, uh, transcript into RNA. It's a really sophisticated uh, process that has to take care of the all the chemical barriers, uh, play with the derivatization, mechanical induced reaction for a single protein to grow. So there's no hope at all for this Stanley Miller uh, Uri experiment. It, it's it's a, it was a dream. Uh, <laughs> a failed a failed dream fa failed dream i i say wow. i say uh, uh, it was a hot summer night somebody sleeping in a hot summer night could not sleep and had this uh, this dream a uh, nightmare of a chemical evolution and said okay i'll go to the lab tomorrow and i will set up a, a system and prove chemical evolution with this dream that never came true. Well, let me just ask you one last um, technical question, and then and then I'll and then we'll try to transition to some some topics that maybe some less chemistry minded listeners okay. would, would would appreciate more. But can <laughs> sure. you just quickly comment on um, you you talk about this ribosome, which is a tiny molecular machine. Mm -hmm. Can you comment on what it's made of okay what is what is it Oof. made of and, and, and then it does that does that involve some sort of a chicken and egg problem and how do you solve that i think it involves the most challenging chicken and egg paradox of life because when you look at this machinery you see that it's made of proteins and rna <laughs> You know, the, the machinery that is essential for protein synthesis is made of proteins. So how come? <laughs> you need to have proteins in order to start the whole process of making proteins for the cell. So how come you have to have the chicken before starting to make chicken uh, or the eggs, whatever? <laughs> There's no way out. Okay, but people would say, okay, life ha could have been started with RNAs. And the RNAs then could somehow uh, have started the protein process. But uh, ribosomes are really crazy machinery because they, uh, they have the two paradox of life in themselves. You have RNAs and proteins in that machinery, so you cannot escape. If you if you say, okay, RNAs started the process of protein synthesis, or proteins started the process the process of protein synthesis, you you will be wrong because you need RNAs and proteins to start the protein system system. Uh, so there's no way out. Uh, ribosomes kills any hope of chemical evolution and it's it, they are so bad brian uh, 
that the other day I was reading a paper saying, okay, uh, we have been so far enabled to prove uh, uh, chemical evolution starting with proteins. We have been so far enabled to chemical uh, to prove chemical evolution starting with RNA, the RNA world. Uh, but now I have the solution. Life started with ribosomes. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was laughing, of course. I'm uh, uh, as a Brazilian, we like to laugh to make jokes, and uh, <laughs> Brazilians really enjoy it, that paper because it's that's it's, almost like saying life started with life. Yeah, you know, it okay. started with the ribosomes. How <laughs> come <laughs> they had problem with proteins? They had trouble with RNAs, and then they they are they are calling for ribosomes to start life. But if we look at the ribosomes; they are made of, I guess, forty-four different proteins and different RNAs. Also, they call the R RNAs, the ribosomes RNA. So you have a collection of proteins. You have a collections of RNAs because the proteins are the mechanical part of the ribosomes that uh, produce the movement, the, 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 the movements. And the RNAs, are uh, they provide the connections uh, for the machinery to work. So there's no way out. You always need proteins and RNAs to make a machinery for protein synthesis. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I think that ribosomes killed Dar Darwin. Uh, there's uh, <laughs> people say that dinos kill Darwin, or I would say ribosomes, uh, for a molecular point of view, for chemical point of view, ribosomes, uh, uh, it, it completely remove any hope we could have for chemical evolution on Earth. Life was established uh, with a brilliant mind able to make that machinery from from uh, uh, from nothing and from that machinery started the production of proteins uh, there's no other explanation reasonable explanation for the origin of life so so what i'm hearing is you, you got to have that ribosome but you also have to have the suite of machines that produce the ATPs that fuel the ribosome. Sure. And, 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 and you have to have all of this standing together at once, not just this, but lots of other factors and features that we could talk about. Um, but but uh, so, so that to you has become a very convincing argument that this all had to have stood together at once. The first life had all of its necessary parts and there were lots of them. And that points to divine supernatural creation to you is am i getting the gist correct perfect that's exactly what i came to the conclusion because uh -huh. you know everything is essential it's not only the ribosomes the nucleus have to send the information or the transfer rnas must be there the 20 ones and the enzymes that connect the rnas to the right amino acid should be there and the recipes should be there also because otherwise you you never make a functional protein. You can you can even call, uh, if you think of a miracle that started that machinery. Okay, but how come that you have the correct recipe for a functional protein? Because we know that for a protein, uh, the probability of making a functional protein exceeds all uh, change chance probability a casual probability that is available in this uh, in this planet there is no chance sufficient uh, chance available on earth to make a functional protein the recipe should be there also uh, mm. written recipe should be there from the very uh, beginning and not, uh, not just one brian we know now uh, from uh, uh, science, we were shutting down uh, gen uh, some genes from very not so sophisticated as uh, beings, uh, living beings. 
And we now know that at least we need 300 proteins, functional proteins, 300 of them to start uh, uh, life because life is a really complex business and we need lots of those proteins. So at least 300 recipes should be there for functional proteins and all this machinery. So it's not a, an act of faith. I, 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 I tell my students and audience when I give talks, I don't believe in creation. I, I'm sure we are created. It's not a belief. I'm, I'm completely convinced that we were created. So the science actually supports it. I, I've heard it expressed this way, and maybe you you could agree with this or or, or not. But uh, uh, but because our culture and and I, and my next question for you is going to be, you know, what what is the reception uh, in in your culture there in Brazil? What's the reception and, and what's the the, uh, uh, the the sense and feeling about about intelligent design as a movement mm. or, and even mm. biblical creation? But but faith in our culture is the word is defined. Basically, the atheists have 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 uh, uh, hijacked the definition to mean um, mm -hmm. be believing that something is true in spite of all the evidence against it. Yeah. yeah. But, what, but that's not biblical faith. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, so it's so we we're saying you believe it. You believe in something that's true because the evidence supports it. <laughs> And so that's true um, for me, both historically, when I look at the historical um, uh, proofs, if you will, of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus from the dead, that's mm -hmm. that makes my faith in that resurrection and in him as, a, as my savior, mm -hmm. that, ma that makes my faith, you know, a step into the light of evidence, not a step into the darkness. Um, would you, would you align with that? Sure. In general? Yeah. Oh, I fully agree. That's exactly what I, I tell in my, my lectures here in Brazil. Uh, Christians have a, a really specific type of faith that is completely different from what the atheists try to define. Mm. Uh, we, don't, we don't believe in ETs. Do you believe in ETs, extraterrestrial people that are... Uh, uh, flying around this planet, I, I don't, I don't, because I don't have any evidence for that. I don't believe in in magical beings that uh, come in the night and give me uh, a coin <laughs> in, in exchange by a, a tooth. I don't believe in in these magical beings. Uh, my my faith is fully based on reasoning, on evidence, on science. On, on historical evidence, like Jesus, re resurrection of Jesus is perhaps the most, if you go to a court with a judge and you provide the evidence, I think he will be fully convinced that Christ rex, uh, resurrected from death. And uh, why I, I believe that chemical evolution is completely uh, unfeasible because the chemical laws tell me uh, that uh, chance will never make life. Uh, so our faith is fully based on evidence. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't believe, you. we understand, I, well, I would say, we understand that Christ uh, uh, arose from the death. We understand that God created the earth. We understand that life was established here by an intelligent mind. It's an understanding. It's not an act of faith. Of course, I, I have an act of faith that Jesus is coming back. Okay. I don't I, I cannot prove it. <laughs> okay. But my faith is uh is directed to future event. Everything else is Based it on evidence, I understand that there is a God. I understand there's life was established here on this planet from evidence, from reasoning. So I fully agree with you, Brian. They they are trying to to uh, define our faith 
in a completely wrong way. Our faith, the Christian faith, is a unique faith. It's based, based, fully based on reasoning, evidence, and science also. So it's it's the way I summarize it is by saying it's defensible. It's defensible fully. from from all those different areas. So I, I really, it's it's just fun to chat with you and and to to hear uh, that basically you and I have seem to have come to a lot of the same conclusions independently of one another. And it, it, it kind of makes me wonder, well, why is it that we we see, you know, the same uh, support for a creator? And and I, mm -hmm. I, and I think I think it's because of the truthfulness of things like Romans one, um, which uh, which says that uh, that the invisible qualities of God of God have been made known through that which he has made. And now I've studied mm -hmm. chemistry, you've studied chemistry, so we've both studied that which he has made, and we've both come to the same conclusion. One of his invisible qualities is he's a master genius designer engineer. <laughs> mm -hmm. But but we've also come to the same conclusion by studying the scripture, uh, which is his special revelation, um, that he is a loving savior. And so that's mm -hmm. just a, it's a real joy to talk with you, it, even though you're so far away. But let's, Marcos, uh, transition to the culture. Mm -hmm. um, what can you say in terms of um, what is the reception ah. that that that's this sort of this belief in uh, um, in in, a, in the God of the Bible? Um, mm -hmm. Is it is it does it is it well received in among the regular people more so than among the intelligent and um academic people or is it the other way around or how would you characterize that oh i guess in, in brazil is almost the same as everywhere else but the academic people they have been i would say spoiled by uh um uh, what it, what they call evidence for evolution in the big bang uh, like myself when i entered the academia I was buying those theories without expecting the inspecting the products, and they are fully convinced now that we evolved and Darwin was right. The Big Bang created the universe, uh, but ordinary people on the streets they are also scientists. Uh, <laughs> we believe that scientists only are found in academia universities that's not correct uh, we we are all all of us are are science amateur science and professional science but we we are all scientists i would say there's amateur scientists which are uh, who are even better scientists than professional science uh, we can have a discussion on that also and as amateur scientists, we also inspect the universe around us. Uh, we, we see life, we see the universe, the stars on the skies. Uh, we we uh, touch a wire and we are we feel the electron, uh, the current, electrical current there, and we we start to believe in electrons, uh, even though we have we haven't seen electrons so uh, when people come to us uh, amateur scientists that have not bought evolution and the big Bang and say okay like explosion uh, uh, create the universe we are <laughs> skeptical of course because we look at the skies and see all these beautiful structures of galaxies and stars they are all colorful and our eyes have the textures for those colors. We see life in, in its complexity and it's really hard to convince amateur scientists that <laughs> evolution and the Big Bang create the universe. And I think Brazilians are quite, quite good on this uh, amateur scientific endeavor. Uh, there was a pool the other day. They were asking people all out, around the world, do you believe in God? And which country, Brian, finished first? Where, where most people believing in God live? Which country? U.S.? No. No, I don't know. Brazil. Okay. <laughs> uh, we are the world champions in trusting in God. 
89% of Brazilians answered, yes, we trust wow. in, in God. I sent an email to John West, the director of uh, intelligent design in, in the US saying, hey, hey, John, I think we have to say that in God we trust is a declaration from Brazil now. Mm. <laughs> Not 89%, Brian. So I think we are in the right country to, in the right time in the history of science, to promote uh, that God create the universe at once, but only the power of his words. Because we have lots of amateur scientists in Brazil that have not been uh, convinced by those uh, theories of evolution. And they are ready to, to take the truth of uh, creationism, that a God made the universe, he made the, the, the li life by the power, the uh, exclusive power of his word. And that's what I'm doing here in Brazil with my talks, my podcasts. And the reception has been really, really good. You, nice. you, we had a, the other day a debate in the podcast, major podcast in Brazil. Uh, so far, three million, uh, three millions Brazilians watch it, that debate. And you see from the comments, that who uh, uh, wins, uh, the winners of that debate were us from the intelligent design movement with creationists also there. By far, uh, people were saying, oh, I'm, I'm, I knew that, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> it was so clear, it's so clear well, that Dar Darwin was wrong. It's so clear that- uh, Come on, you're uh, cheating. You're cheating because yeah, sure. you have you have all the evidence on your side. No wonder you win the debate. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, the dinosaur, the young dinosaurs, you know, the soft tissues, hey, Brian, the soft the soft tissues that they found in dinosaurs that killed Darwin. How come that you have soft tissues in dinosaurs for six million years extinct animals? They still find flesh, flesh, uh uh fresh flesh in those bones it's impossible uh how come that the, the james webb telescope takes a picture of the beginning of the universe and the the, the, the universe is red there it, it, all the galaxies are there they are massive their structure uh the, all the elements are there also how come that you go to the dna you find mitochondria dna and you find out that all of us come from a single woman that lived on Earth 6,000 years ago. You go to the Y uh, chromosome and you find the, the Y Aiden, the man that we all descend from. And we find out from the genomic uh, investigation that he lived in this planet 6,000 years ago as the mitochondrial Eve, the couple. And you find out that it, it, it matches perfectly with the Genesis account for creation. A single woman, a single man, uh, 6,000 years ago. So we are, we are flooded with evidence nowadays. It's a really, really a good time to be a creationist. Mm. Uh, a creationist, because we are flooded with strong or undeniable evidence for creation. So we should be uh, talking about this. We should be spreading all over the world as news. Uh, we should be brave enough to say it. I, I'm, that's exactly what I'm, I'm doing here in Brazil. I'm going to this podcast, TV interviews. I'm, I'm uh, uh, in my YouTube channel say, we, we win, we win. The Bible wins, <laughs> God wins. <laughs> <laughs> that's great i just i just love your enthusiasm and and yeah. what a great conversation we've had uh can can we just wrap up with maybe um uh can i get a sense from you of why this matters obviously this matters it's mm -hmm. not like you know you're you're in you're in an academic environment professionally mm -hmm. but this goes this seems to me to be more of a passion than a okay i'm going to work and i 
you know, I, I, I do this chemistry and blah, blah, blah. No, you're passionate about the creation message. And I just want to know why. Can you share with our listeners, what is it that's that's got you switched on to, to, to this message of creation? And why does it matter to you? Well, Brian, before I was doing science uh, with the perspective that I was um, something that evolved and okay, I was praying God also, but uh, mainly I, I had this understanding that I was something that evolved. But then with the intelligent design, I, I was reconverted to my teacher from Sunday school. And then I fully understand that I'm, uh, I was created by the image of God. So I'm, I'm the son. I am a son of God. One of his sons. You know, this all-powerful, all-might God that created this huge universe, this beautiful universe, uh, create all this kind of lives. Uh, he's so powerful. He's so so super and i'm his son you know this is amazing isn't it to to realize that i'm his son that he he cares for me he died in the cross for me and he wants to be by my side and i want to be by his side also so that gave me all this enthusiastic of studying his creation studying chemistry Everything that I find in chemistry, I say, wow, my father is so powerful. He's so smart, so intelligent. <laughs> so that's the reason of my motivation. I'm studying the, uh, the creation, uh, everything that my father did, my father did. It's not something, I'm not a... Uh, somebody that is studying something. I'm studying the creation, the works of God, uh, data after data, uh, spectra after spectra, as Tonson once said, uh, the, the truth that is uh, revealed by my chemistry is great are the works of my father, God. And there's nothing that gives you more enthusiasm to make uh, to do science than uh, studying the work of your father. That's that's awesome. So well said, and thank you so much for that. Okay, I'm gonna. I have an idea, uh, uh -huh. and, I'm, and I'm gonna I'm gonna propose this. So mm -hmm. can you um, can you for us? So so the Genesis one one in English. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Would you just say that in your native Portuguese? Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, no princípio, no princípio, criou Deus os céus e a terra. No princípio, criou Deus os céus e a terra. No princípio, meu pai, meu pai, my father, my daddy, no princípio, ele criou todas as coisas. Só ele criou todas as coisas. Só ele e ninguém mais. Only him and nothing else. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for your time and your expertise. And what a joy it is to to uh, to meet you. And and and, and uh, you're the kind of guy I think that I'd I'd like to hang out with, not in an official podcast, but also in a just uh, just over the phone or or maybe someday I'll visit your great country and, and sure. we could we could connect. So we'll we'll pray that the Lord uh, facilitates Amen. that in his timing so thanks so, mu so much for your time again and mm -hmm. um you know um may our listeners be blessed and um and encouraged so so thank you and uh goodbye for now bye-bye thank bye -bye. you bye -bye.